Well, if you're going to have change, you can't be afraid of change. Uh, buyer's remorse on this deal on the health care? No, it's still moving forward, but it's going to be delayed. One of the big provisions, the mandate is going to be delayed a full year. The timing of the announcement is rather interesting as well, and I'm not sure how many people in Congress knew this uh, this was going to happen. Congressman Jim McDermott, Democrat Washington, member of the House Ways and Means Committee, and my friend here on the Ed Schultz Radio Show. Congressman, good to have you back with us. It's good to be back. What was your uh, reaction to the news about the uh, health care mandate being delayed to 2015? I was stunned. Um, none of us had, saw it coming. No one was given any kind of heads up. And uh, it's troublesome when something like this happens 90 days before the uh, bill is to go into effect. It, it raises, we've already been getting questions on, on our on our phones about whether or not Obamacare is really going to be there if they canceled it. And so the public it was not prepared for this. The president did it while, or he had somebody in his office do it while he was overseas. And that really, that makes it very hard for us who are out here in the field trying to defend this uh, to explain what's going on. Well, I talked about this earlier. Uh, does this White House have a communication problem with allies on Capitol Hill? I mean, uh, you think about all the time and effort and legislative might that went in to pass health care reform in this country, and then a major provision of making sure that people do get it and businesses do comply. Oh, by the way, we're going to hold off on that, and nobody knows about it. I mean, I'm, I'm astounded by that. Well, I, I'm... You know, I, I, it may be the best public policy. I, I'm not going to say one way or another on that. But what, I'm, what, what happens in something like this is you confuse the public. And that's what's troublesome uh, is that something, as you say, we worked so hard. Uh, a lot of people took votes on this uh, that lost their election back in uh, the election of 19, uh, 2010. And, and so... People have really gone down the line on this, and to have it suddenly change dramatically right at the last moment is is really tough to understand what the thinking is. Um, I don't I don't think the business community ever liked this, and in fact, there's already stories out now. The hospitals want to have the same thing for them. They don't want the cuts for them to be delayed, and they want them delayed until 2016. And everybody now sees it. It, it's kind of like blood in the water, and, yeah. I, and I'm I'm worried. Uh, the individual mandate is still there. The exchanges are going forward. In my state, we're ready to go. I've been I went over to King County the other day and talked to people. They're they're just ready and waiting to have the doors open on the first of October. But mm -hmm. this kind of thing just throws a lot of dust up in the air, and people don't know what to think. Congressman Jim McDermott here on the Ed Schultz Radio Show. King County, of course, is uh, Seattle, Washington, a major market where people are ready to respond to to all of this. Uh, delaying this full implementation of this health care, uh, number one, I, I, I get a sense that it blindsided lawmakers. Uh, well, I, you, I think it, that's the it, only way a, you can really describe it. Most of us were, <laughs> I was spending yesterday over there talking to people about how we're going to make this thing work. Uh, you know, I mean, we're we're out here beating our brains out, and we go home to the office and find out they've made a major announcement from the White House, and it's like, whoa, <laughs> what's going on here? Well, it tells me that Democratic leadership was not in the loop, because if they were, you would have been. Sure, I, and and I, I mean, I, I think that's what's that's the problem uh, about this whole thing is that all of us feel sort of, you know. Um, I, I wish that it, it wasn't happening this way because it's going to be tough enough to get it off the ground, and, and everybody knows that. Nobody, nobody's ever been uh, uh, sort of sort of pie in the sky. This is going to be real simple. We'll just move forward with this. We knew it was going to be tough, and and so that's what that's what really uh, made yesterday's announcement really pretty tough to to deal with because you do you hear do you congressman do you hear a lot of businesses squawking about the mandate that they're going to let people go 
hours are going to be reduced, wages are going to be cut, all this stuff. What, what, did, what did you hear in the field, as you say, uh, working with the public on this? Well, there's still some things to be worked out, and, and I think people, you know, we all acknowledge that. We knew that it wouldn't be without wrinkles when it went in. Uh, but when you take away this mandate, they, they had a mandate in Massachusetts that people were all jumping up and down and said, oh, all kinds of bad things are going to happen and so forth. It didn't happen. And, in fact, they just passed a law this year that repealed their, uh, their mandate in Massachusetts because they knew the mandate was in the Accountable Care Act. So it's like this is a very delicate structure we've, we're building here. And when you suddenly pull out one of the supports, what does that mean? I mean, why yeah. why did it happen 90 days before we were going to go into full implementation? I, I really don't know. Okay. And uh, the IRS, their role in this, uh, they, of course, would be uh, the uh, verification arm, not the enforcement, but the verification arm of all of this uh, via uh, tax returns on on who is getting health care provided to them. Yes. Uh, I- is there a chance that they just were not equipped to handle this? I don't. I don't think this was a IRS thing. I mean, we had Treasury in before the Ways and Means Committee the other day that said that they were ready to go. Really? Yeah. That's 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 why it's so puzzling. So the Treasury Department sent personnel over to the House Ways, Ways and Means, Means Committee and, before Ways and Means and yeah. said. They're it's a green. Go. It's a green line. Yep. So we we were really. I mean, some of us were really happy, excited that that we were really going to launch this baby. <laughs> so now, now I said earlier in this program that not only have we uh, handed the the conservatives the gun, but the ammunition to shoot holes all in this thing to go out on the campaign trail to say, "See, we told you all along. Uh, it was too big. Couldn't be done. It's unpopular. People don't want it." And now Obama realizes it. This makes the narrative a little bit tougher for uh, people such as yourself in the House uh, running every two years. Well, that's, I, I think members uh, are going to feel, you know, I mean, maybe in the long run it'll work out. But when people are thinking uh, 18 months to an election, they're thinking to themselves, how am I going to explain the fact that they started dismantling it right when we were getting to the to, to the goal line. I mean... <laughs> it gives the conservatives the very narrative that they have been... Uh, it underscores their narrative all along. This yeah. further confirms that even the proponents of Obamacare know it's going to hurt jobs, decrease economic growth, and make it harder for families to access uh, to quality and affordable health care. That, of course, is Eric Cantor speaking. And then he goes on to say that the best delay for Obamacare is a permanent one. Well, you know, it's so predictable what they're going to say and the card that they're going to play and how they've got now over a year to convince people that Obamacare is bad. Wow. I, I, I mean, Ed, I, I, I'm a supporter of the president, and I think he did a good thing when he put this baby together. But he got, two, <laughs> got elected twice. <laughs> yeah. I, I find it really hard to... To, to explain what's going on here. See, if you're going to make a change like this, you don't have the president in Africa and have the White House do a blog so that no one can ask any questions and do it at 5 o'clock at night when on the day before a big holiday coming up. It's just... Uh, I, oh. <laughs> I hear you. I, 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 I I'm with your the frustration. President. I want to help him. We're all with them. How to? Yeah, you don't know how to. We're all with them. This is a cave to the Chamber of Commerce. This is a cave to the to the business rhetoric that's out there. And I equate this to the old say, you can't raise taxes on the job creators. Oh, really? We did that, and we've been adding jobs ever since. Uh, I think if you're going to do this, you got to implement it. You got to go strong for it. What this is denying people health care now? This delay. There were people who were counting on it. But we don't we don't know exactly how it's going to play out. That's why I'm saying it yeah. may turn out to be a good thing. But the I, the way it was done was <laughs> was um, not very not not the best way to make it work. Frankly, Congressman Jim McDermott, 
a doctor as well. Great to have you with us on the program. Yeah. Talk I appreciate to you. you. Thank you, sir. Uh, stunned, blindsided, not the way it should have been done, president out of the country. I, I would say that uh, Mr. McDermott is not the only member of Congress on the Democratic side that feels this way. one 